Hello, my name is Neve Brennan and I'm the archivist with Donegal County Council. Today I'm going to talk to you about our family and local records. Donegal County Archives is part of the Culture Division of Donegal County Council. The Archive Service was established in 1999, with its remit being the whole county. The Archives Research Room is in Lifford. Collections of both private and public origin from across the county are held with us. Our services include to researchers, outreach, educational services and education packs. Exhibitions, including travelling exhibitions, events, digitised collections, and we're on social media, Facebook and Twitter, and more recently, Instagram. The first collection I'm going to talk to you about is the Donegal Grand Jury. This is our oldest public collection. The Donegal Grand Jury was a precursor to the county councils. There were 40 of them in Ireland, and they are believed to ha have originated in Norman times. They comprised mainly the largest landowners, the wealthiest people in the county could become a member of the grand jury. Their services were varied, but very much like what county councils do today. They're involved in construction, maintenance and repair of infrastructure, including bridges and roads, upkeep of hospitals, prisons, courthouses. The grand jury of Donegal, like all the grand juries, held their meetings and they call them assizes. These are where contracts for public works to be done were ratified. The oldest public collection in the archive is the grand jury records, and these include presentments and minutes, correspondence and a couple of photographs of the last grand jury. The records give information for, for family researchers, including the names of the members of the grand jury and the various contractors, also ratepayers. The Grand Jury was replaced by the more democratic Donegal County Council and the Rural and Urban District Councils that were established in 1899 under the 1898 Local Government Ireland Act. One of our most important um, and, and most popular collection is the Poor Law Unions or Boards of Guardian. Poor Law Unions were electoral districts created under the Poor Law Ireland Act of 1838. The Boards of Guardians were committees that built and ran the workhouses from 1840 to 1922. There were eight workhouses in County Donegal, Ballyshannon, Donegal Town, Dunfanaghy, Glenties, Inishone, where it was based in Candona, Letterkenny, Milford and Stenorder. This is they are one of the original designs for Ireland's workhouses. The records that we hold relating to the poor law include minute books for all the workhouses from about 1841-1842, admission and discharge registers, indoor and outdoor relief registers, records of deaths, dispensary records, some correspondence, financial documents, treasury reports, statistics. This is a poster for Letterkenny Union for purchase of supplies. The records of the Poor Law Unions are a fascinating insight into life in the 19th century, the lives of the inmates of the workhouses, the managers, the staff, the contractors, ratepayers. They cover the famine period and themes include destitution, eviction and emigration, local politics and employment. Some admission registers have the lists of the names of whole families who often enter the workhouse several times over a period of years. This is Letterkenny Workhouse. It is now the County Museum. The minutes include the names of managers, staff such as the matron, master, nurse, teachers in the workhouse, medical officers, dispensary officials, board members, contractors, rate collectors. The duties of the board's guardian were extended to the end of the 19th century and by then included public health and housing. Almost all of the Board of Guardian records, including admission and discharge registers and minutes, are online now on findingbypass.ie. There is a charge for the service, but eventually these records will also be available on the County Council Archive website. They can, always, they can also be viewed for free on public computers in Donegal libraries when they're open and booking is essential. They can also obviously be viewed the original records at the archives when it's open. 
Other collections the archives hold include planning and housing records, environmental services and roads. One of our most popular collections is the Motor Tax Register, the earliest one from 1903 to 1923. We have almost all the minutes of Donegal County Council, the Rural District Councils, the Urban District Councils and Ballyshannon Town Commissioners. We have electoral or voters registration from 1880s to 1980s, so there are significant gaps in those years. We hold records, some of the records of labourers' cottages that were built throughout the county. This is the design of a typical labourers' cottage, Model D. You will see some of these houses still in Donegal. The, the design is very clear. These are the cottages. There were also townhouses built. Electoral voters' registers. Some are late 19th century, but they're mainly from the 1920s or 30s to the 1980s. There are gaps, mainly from the 1950s. Some of those gaps can be filled in by visiting the National Library and the National Archives, which also hold electoral registers. These hold names only, but the names of families over the age of 21 appear. And women begin to appear in registers from 1899 onwards. This is a typical electoral register. This is from Rafo. We also hold surveys and valuation records, topographical surveys, which are divided into parishes, townlands, and into each plot of land for houses worth over five pounds. These date back nearly 200 years to 1833. Our first major, um, the first major valuation records of the 19th century are Griffith's valuation, and they're held in the library, in the local studies library in Letter Kenny. They're also online at athbadireland.ie. The tide department books and the census of 1901 and 1911 are available to view online via the National Archives of Ireland website. The valuation, the valuation records the archives hold rate mainly to the 20th century. They span from approximately 1910 or to 1917 right up to the 1980s and they are divided into electoral divisions, townlands and plots. They give the size and value of the plot of land, the owner and main, the main, the owner and the main occupier and um, they are very popular for family and local history. The valuation office complements these set, or where we have gaps, we'll be able to cover these gaps as well. And this is, a, this is a value, an extract from a valuation book. Glenties. We hold a serious number of school records that have been deposited with us by uh, schools over the last 21 years, from primary schools. Some date as, as far back as the 1860s. They're mainly from the 1880s. Some are from later, obviously. Some are incomplete. We have roll books, registers of pupils, inspectors report books, and other school records. And those that we don't have, some are the gaps can be filled in at the National Archives. A lot of uh, school records um, were lost, and a lot are held privately. If um, you have any records in your attic, please be free to deposit them with us. We'd be delighted to have them and they'll be made accessible where possible um, to members of the public if they're over 100 years old. These are very important for family history because they fill in many of the gaps, particularly in relation to trying to find where women and children were. Children in particular are quite invisible in 19th and 20th, early 20th century records. So the school roll books are great for that and the registers. We have a number of private landed estate records that are great for family history because they include rentals and other items. And this is a list of them here, Steele Nicholson's, Murray Stewart's, Stewart's of Ards. We have a fantastic collection from the Montgomery's and Boyton's of Convoy and the Groves of Castle Grove, including letters from Captain James Grove when he was um, fighting in World War I. And we have the Steele Nicholson's of Thalmor House Glenealy. We have quite a good collection from, the, from this family dating back to the early 19th century. In fact, some records I think date back even further than, than that. Legal deeds, photographs, letters. We have, hold a lot of other collections. I'm going to just pick out a couple of them. We hold various photographs. We have the Guidor Hotel Visitors Books, which are a great commentary on social and economic and political commentary on the 19th century uh, um, in West Donegal for both the rich and the destitute. People visited Lord, George's, Lord George Hill's hotel and made um, wrote um, essays and poems and, um, and, and letters. It's very worthwhile um, 
clicking onto our website to see the, these two visitors' books, which are online, free to view. The County Committee of Agriculture spans the 20th century. It's very important for our social economic history. Daniel Doherty, who emigrated to Boston, was a campaigner against partition, and his um, collection was donated to Donegal County Archives. And we have the Donegal Board of the GAA collection kindly donated to us, and that dates back to the 1930s. Some of the archives online have already mentioned, including the Grand Jury, but there's also the Joseph Murray Joseph collection. Joseph Murray was um, a brigadier in the War of Independence based in South uh, Donegal, mainly Bundoor, Ballyshannon, that area. And his um, son donated his, kindly donated his entire collection to us, and that is now all online on our website. The Lifford Jail Journal or Turnkey Report is a fascinating insight into life in jail in Lifford in almost 200 years ago. That's online. Minutes of meetings of local authorities from the time of the um, 1916 Rising are online. And Fanna District Nursing Association and the West Donegal Crofterlite thesis dating from the 30s and 40s are online on our website to view. They are brilliant for social history, for local history and also for family history. The Wador Hotel books were both conserved and um, this is um, an image from one of them after the conservation work had been done. So if you want any more information, please contact me at um, this address and phone number 91724900 and the email address is archivist at donegalcoco.ie for more information. And don't forget to follow us and like us on Facebook and on Twitter. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you and have a good day and stay safe. Thank you.